This is the seventh video in a series of 10 tutorials on how to use the pen tool in Illustrator CC. In the last video, we learned how to use the Pathfinder and the Shape Builder tool. In the videos leading up to this one, we've also practiced using the pen tool options such as add and delete anchor point and the anchor point tool. We've learned how to use our keyboard to work and adjust and change curves with shift, alt, and control and the spacebar. And we've learned how to use the direct selection tool and the smart guides. So in this video, we'll be learning even more tools for using the pen tool. This time we'll be practicing creating this lovely bee here, which is a drawing that I have made, but you can scan in the drawing of your own if you would like and use many of the same techniques I'll be talking about in the next couple of videos. I have a link in the description to download this B character, but if you're teaching graphic design, know that this video goes with the pen tool exercises to learn illustrator tools unit at digitalartteacher.com. Check the info bar at the top for more teaching resources. Before we move this B into our document, Go to your layers and add a new layer above the working layer and name this drawing. For the moment, lock the working layer so that when we place our B character on the page, it will be placed on the correct layer. Create a new artboard and place the B onto your artboard. Click and drag the image you want to use into your Illustrator window. One suggestion here. Keep all the images you want to use in your Illustrator document in the same folder or in a folder that you have called images or something. I have my B here and my Fleur de Lis here and I plan to leave them in this folder. The reason why you keep your images in a specific place is that Illustrator does not store an image within the document. So if you happen to move an image from the folder that you had it in, or delete it, you will no longer see it in your Illustrator window, which could be extremely frustrating for you. Once you have your image in, use the Shift key to resize so that you do not distort your image. You can also hold down Alt to keep the image centered at the point at which you drug it in. Remember that everything that you do should be done on the working layer. So you may be a little confused as to why I had you put the drawing on top of the working layer. Because as I work, I will not be able to see what I'm doing. But I'm going to change the opacity of the drawing so we can see through it to the working layer and yet still see all the shapes and lines that still need to be created. So click on the B, go to the opacity panel and lower the opacity to about 30 to 40 percent. Now lock the layer and click on the working layer. Okay, let's work with some shapes before we jump into the pen tool. When you look at a drawing that you would like to vectorize, analyze where you think you might be able to use some shapes as a starting point for your drawing. In this drawing, I'll be utilizing the ellipse tool in several places. But take a good look at your drawing and see if you could place some squares or rectangles in it as well. For the B, we'll be using the ellipse tool to create the head, the eyes, and the little circle antennae, and then the body, which of course will need some adjustment. Beginning with the head, simply grab the ellipse tool and click and drag until you have the desired size. Move the circle or the anchors and handles as you see fit. Remember that you can switch to the pen tool and use Command and Alt to change the anchors and the handles. Or, if you prefer, you can use the Direct Selection tool. To begin using the Direct Selection tool, you'll probably need to click on the anchor so that you can see the handles before you begin. You may at this time want to fill the shapes as you work. You should still be able to see the drawing in a lighter shade. So if this is too distracting, you can always fill all your shapes at the end. Also, you may periodically want to go to the layers panel and switch the drawing layer visibility off so that you can actually see what color that you're gonna end up with. 
If you choose to do the filling as you go, then when you create new shapes, you will have the fill still selected. So if you need to turn that off so you can see what you're doing, you might do that. If you are using only the selection tool, you can also tilt shapes by hovering around the outside of the shape corners. And since these two shapes are very similar, I'm going to copy and paste this one. But I do have a problem. The reason why that happened is because I have the direct selection tool. So I only copied that one section of that circle. So now that I have the selection tool, I will command C and V and I have my circle. And I'll select both and give it a white fill. The drawing has this eyeball in front of this eyeball. And if I want to change that, I will right click, go to arrange, and send backward. Okay, we'll go ahead and pause here and allow you to finish all your elliptical shapes. And in the next video, We'll chat about making the body and how to easily make those stripes down the middle. So I'll see you in the next one.